Hey guys, I just have a quick video today on how to diagnose a pressure switch. Uh, this is actually my furnace. I'm in my basement, but this is the same furnace I'm working on in the video. So I just thought I would show you a couple of things down here. Um, when I was coming up through gas school, the teacher always said it's never the pressure switch. You have a vent pressure issue, but nowadays parts are cheap. It's almost always the pressure switch unless it's something major. Um, he was brought up obviously in the times of the big steel solid pressure switch. They could pretty much operate full of water. They would still work. So um, as always, thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button if you learn anything, and uh, enjoy the video. So as you can see here, we have two code 57s stored in the circuit board of the furnace. Uh, this is a two-stage furnace, so it has two pressure switches. 57 is for the high. So the circuit board sends 24 volts to each pressure switch. As the inducer motor starts to run, it pulls vacuum through the furnace and pulls the pressure switch closed. So if the circuit board doesn't see 24 volts back from either switch, it thinks there's a problem either in the switch or in the vent system. You always want to check the vent pressure first to know that we're working with a good venter motor. So right away, the manometer jumps up to 1.3 inches of water column, which is a good reading. We need 0.6 for the high fire to close and 0.3 for the low fire to close. So right away, we know our vent pressure is good, and we're going to check the pressure switch next. I always like to verify 24 volts to ground on either side of the pressure switch terminals to know the switch is physically closing, and in this situation, we did have power on either side. Since this is kind of an intermittent issue, I'm checking voltage loss through the switch, and in this case, we do have a volt of voltage loss. Anytime you have voltage loss through a switch, it means you also have resistance through the switch. Um, and as you know from basic electrical training, resistance through a switch is never a good thing. You only want to see resistance on a load. Uh, switches should always be in the 0.1 to 0.2 ohm area. And as you can see here, we have a, a varying resistance as we check the resistance on this switch. So right away, we know the switch is no good and we're going to have to swap it out. We're gonna get this changed out for the customer so he can go into high fire again. Uh, he actually didn't even notice the furnace was not going into high fire. I caught this on a maintenance. So again, it's always important to have your furnace checked out before heating season. Um, we'll swap this out. I have lots of these on the truck. It's a very common issue, like I said, just a bad batch of these switches from factory. Uh, otherwise, this is a great furnace. I have this furnace in my house. It's been nothing but reliable. I've had it for four years now. Um, and I've had no issues whatsoever. So swap it out, hook things back up, and we're good to go. Here's a little tip if you have this furnace or if you work on this furnace from time to time. Uh, pressing that button once will bring up the fault log. You can see code 45, which I caused, as well as 257s. Um, this will show you up to a week of fault logs. Press it again for airflow. AF is your airflow, 770 CFM. This is so handy for air conditioning season. Um, just tap it and you know right away. FR is your firing rate, which you can already tell by that lowercase h. If it's a capital H, it's in high fire. And UI 70, it means it's a 70,000 UTU furnace. UI is unit information.